that for a partner? Well, you should have to be Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is a chance for skin. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm going to be in this sort of position here. I'm going to take my cross collar, I'm going to try to take your sleeve, I'm going to pull onto my side here. Okay, I'm going to use the transition now so my bottom foot's going to go through and great line is late. This foot's going to come to this position now. And I'm going to make sure that I'm blocking his arm here. See, I'll pull myself in a little bit more. My elbow is on the inside of my knee. This is where my structure comes from. Carson tries to bring my knee down to the mat. It's gonna be hard. If my elbow was the other side, you'll find it very easy to pinch my knees together. So I need to get used to this position here. And I'm curling my grip in at the top of the collar and I'm hugging this. One of the things I wanna stop Carson from doing is hugging my head. If you can hug my head, a lot of his passes are gonna be very easy to do. So that's why I'm always blocking this. So, and also a little point, sometimes like, you might feel tempted to put your heel here, but it's very hard to transition to our other stuff. So if I put my toes here, we can always resort back to our lazy butterfly stuff if I ever wanted to. So like, for example, here, I could just drop this back in, sweep over, put lazy butterfly if I ever needed to. Okay, so we're just gonna go through those positions. Uh, you can do this from traditional half guard as well. Well, if I'm in traditional half guard, and Carson's trying to put cross face pressure into me, I can, Come out this way and go here. Now what we do is use this Z guard to start opening out our doors and stuff, but we usually do a traditional heart guard. So when I'm here with Carson, okay. The great thing about the Z guard is so when I'm here and I'm and I'm here in this position, this leg can do this. See this. So when I do this, I'm looking to make space between his elbow and his hips. That gives me space to come up with this underhook. But the problem is sometimes if I come up with an underhook here, he might use this arm and pull my hips and clap me. Hips. Use this arm, pull my hips. That's it, clamp my underhook now. Oh, but I can't yeah. use it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That might be the issue sometimes. Like, say Carson does this to me, I swap around. So when Carson gets an underhook sometimes, I hug the hips here, now his underhook's useless. Yeah, hold me up with this underhook. He wants to be able to get his underhook here, that's where he can use it really well. Yeah, the swap. So the way we can do about this is, we don't actually go for the underhook until I'm already up and I keep the collar grip. So look, I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna shoot up. I'm gonna do this. I might be on my elbow, I might be on my hand. And my elbow pops through. And straight away here, I'm gonna to go to my back. I'm gonna pull him up to this position here. See where we are here in this position, okay? Now, what I wanna do from this position, I grab the inside of the collar, and I keep myself heavy on Carson here in this position. I might use my hand here. And what I can do, I can shrimp out and get my head to the other side of his body. My head's on top, arm comes over the top of his elbow, breaks down the base, and I grab his collar. Now this is the movement you want to get used to, so shrimping, and then pulling him into the space to get the back. So we're here, cupping this arm, I'm going to extend this leg. Don't use your underhook yet, do this. Now, when you're here in this position, you have my elbow's like under his armpit. I'm then going to unhook and 
come back down to the mat. Grab this, cup the, uh, cup the bicep here, and look to come out, bring my head on top of his back. Come over the top, break down his base, and pull him into the back position. Straight away, you can start looking for chokes and stuff like that. This works really well if he doesn't react to the back and he just posts his hands on the mat. We're gonna look at when he starts to overhook and stuff in a bit. But we need to get used to this motion. Getting your underhook and coming back down to come out the back door with it. This here, this is the important bit I want to focus on. So when I'm here and I get my underhook, see this? Now I'm back down. Now I'm up. Yeah. Let's give that a go. So drop that right now. Let's get back to it now. Just being a master. Don't grab that. <laughs> And the biggest problem that could have happened with this, Carson, you do this pretending to me, is, is the overhook, okay? The one biggest uh, counter to is the lower. So we need to pretend each. Are you proceeding with the inhook? It's this now. Now, for him to take my back, try and take my back. He's going to find it really difficult. Oh, we have other options for this. So let me get to this position, guys. So when we get to this position where I've got, where I've come up, and he overhooks me, that's it there, okay? What I want to do, I want to grab this color on this side. I'm going to drop my grapevine hook. I'm going to look to get what we call a leg torque. We've done the leg torque before. I'm going to pull this leg towards me here. See this, see I'm talking his leg in this position. Then I'll look to grab the bottom of his pants. Now I do like a full shrimp underneath him and I pull him on top of me. So I'll go. Sometimes uh, what happens is when you go to do this technique, he will remove that overhook and post. You know, like at the last second. So you get underneath, and you have both arms sort of posting. So. We here, we lift, we go up, we go down, in, and we're here now in this position. So I get this, and I get this, and I get this torque here. But sometimes as I go to do this, he'll post this arm out at the last second, okay? Now, that isn't an issue at all, because straight away here, I go, let's go back, let's get the overhook. I use that moment. Ah, oh, there you go, post, post. Use that momentum to come up, and straight away, pass. Sometimes you can do it, like, if you're with somebody as meek as Carson, you can pull his pat out from underneath him. But most of the time, you'd have to come up to your knees and cut this leg to you. Let's do it again. here. So I've got this, yeah? Over. So look, as I go to do this technique, he posts. I go back and come to my knees. I cup this leg here. Come to my knees, pull this leg out, drive. Pass around with your knees, you come on top. Use that momentum. So as soon as he posts, you bounce back. If you wait, you'll lose the momentum. Sometimes in a match, like, if he's really good, you might have to go back and forth like three or four times. Boom, 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 boom. But every time, he's a little slower. And you have, you have to keep chasing it. So as soon as he posts, bounce back, pull the knee out from underneath him, and just drive on top. Let's give it a go. Specific practice on a certain position. 
We need to get the underhook deep, so we need to get the underhook deep and drop down here. Head to the chest, his hands are both based on the mat, and we need to start here. My job is to sweep or take his back or submit him. His job is to not only defend those things, but pass my guard. This is our starting point. Ready, go. Yeah? If he's got the overhook, you can sweep him. If he opens the overhook, you can take the back. 